Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jonathan Hardy, resident of both Meriden and Hartford while I'm going through some uh, medical stuff. So back in my old hometown a little bit. Senator Winfield, I thought you and I were going to have birthday cake together. It's going on a long day here, man. So first of all, I want to say I strongly oppose SB 60 and that concerning the presentation of a carry permit. It's already been hashed a lot here. Um, I'm the permit specialist for CCDL, and I could tell you it's also been a gateway drug um, in many instances for other stops. Um, you want to compare it to a DUI checkpoint like was said earlier. Look at any DUI checkpoint. How many drunk drivers do they catch? Nope, but they catch a whole hell of a lot of everything else at these DUI checkpoints that have nothing to do with, with, with drunk driving. So, I mean, that comparison is ridiculous. All right, uh, let me see. I also uh, strongly oppose uh, HB 7218 and that concerning the safe storage of firearms in the home. Um, what really hasn't been discussed enough here, especially when we're talking about the 21 foot rule, that's called the Tulage rule. I'm a firearms instructor, been teaching for over 25 years. Um, the Tulage rule simply stipulates that in 21 feet, somebody can have a blade or other, fire, or other weapon against a person with a firearm, and a very vast majority, well over 90% of the time, that the person that has the blade could come out to be the victor because of the time it takes to access your firearm. You want to add an extra met layer in between for somebody to defend themselves. When at that very time, I don't know how much you people understand, what goes on in a self-defense situation? You've got a caveman portion of your brain that's going to kick in. Fight or flight's going to kick in. Tunnel vision's going to kick in. More adrenaline is going to kick in. You're going to fumble with a little box, which, by the way, our hackerspace had a competition and uh, the winners were a seven-year-old girl and a nine-year-old girl that broke into those boxes in less than 60 seconds, but that's another story. Um, you've got all these things going on. You think someone's gonna fumble with a biometric ID? I've seen people all day trying to log into their damn iPhones and they can't get in their iPhones because it won't read their fingerprint. Women have a harder opportunity with biometric safes than men simply because of fingerprints issues. Ask the state police, the uh, Bureau of Identification, they will tell you that. They do a lot of uh, fingerprints because of that purpose. So this bill will create more victims. I haven't heard enough about those victims being spoken because you're barring access to them and making it more difficult. Yes, any extra step is a life or death situation. Uh, ghost guns. I've heard so much of this, and I do, uh, uh, Representative Dubitsky, I can tell you what that exemplar is, by the way, uh, but um, it's ridiculous. They're not untraceable. They have metal in them. The metal doesn't have to be in the frame, but the gun doesn't work with just a polymer frame. So you need to have other parts that go along with it. Um, if you want to shoot an all-plastic gun, go ahead. I don't want to stand next to you because it's going to blow up. But that's another story altogether. And I've made both polymer guns and I've made metal guns. I've got some registered uh, scary assault rifles that I built when it was legal to do so with serial numbers on them. And I can tell you it's not as easy a process as many people have been saying. Uh, the act concerning storage of a pistol revolver in a motor vehicle, um, again, it's not like many people are actually storing firearms in motor vehicles. I do know of some very rare cases where um, that was the case. Um, I've heard the bell all quick. Uh, state parks, gun owners pay more money in taxes than non-gun owners do, yet we don't get to access the parks uh, with the ability to defend ourselves. And the uh, regulation of firearms by municipalities is a horrible idea. Several towns have gotten rid of their little uh, their codes, especially New London and New Britain when it came to open carry years ago because it was a problem. And I support the act concerning the transfer of assault weapons of large, in large capacity magazines. I don't think it goes far enough. There has to be a better way to do this and uh, facilitate this process as well. Available for any questions if you may have. Thank you. Representative Dubitsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for coming in. Tell me what a security exemplar is. It is the sample amount of metal that is used typically by the ATF to be able to trigger off a metal detector. And of course, that, that number can vary between manufacturers and sensitivity of various metal detectors and everything else. But typically, even if you take the oldest, weakest metal detectors, you're not gonna get any of these guns through because of the fact that the slides are metal, the barrels are metal, the ammo is metal. So you're gonna, even with older, technology, you're still not going to be able to smuggle an undetectable gun in. Okay, so um, this is from federal law? Correct. Okay, and the exemplar is a hunk of metal, which is 3.7 ounces of 17-4 pH stainless steel. Mm -hmm. Is it embedded into the gun? It doesn't have, well, it's going to be part of the gun. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the part most people are talking about manufacturing, like the frame of the gun. So it could be uh, the slide, the barrel, guide rod, various other components that are going to be metal, or 
say if you said like for a frame for like a handgun, like a polymer handgun that people do make, uh, you can still put a plug in there that's going to have the metal and you would even meet the regulation there as well. So, Okay, but under federal law, the, the security exemplar is not part of the gun, right? It's a separate piece of metal that you run through the, the Correct. metal detector, right? It, it's more or less like a calibration tool there, but they're saying this is how much it takes to set off a detector. Okay, so you take this piece of metal that's shaped like a gun, little piece of stainless steel, run it through the metal detector, right? It doesn't have to be shaped like a gun, it's just they, they want to say that this massive metal can trigger this detector. Okay, and you watch the magnetometer run mm -hmm. up, then you take your actual completed gun mm -hmm. with all the parts and all the steel, Yep. run it through? Yep. Okay, and... And none of these polymer guns have been able to, they never, they've never gotten them small enough, and I don't think they ever will, it's physics. Okay, so do you see any basis or any reason to actually take that security exemplar and try to embed it into the gun? It, again, it were like some of the questions with uh, Jake McGuigan earlier, um, you're, you can sit there and we can go on to doing this, that, and the other. Um, I, as a law-abiding citizen, when I manufacture my personal firearm or if I'm trying to improve upon a design, um, it's not going to matter. I'm going to follow the law, but a criminal is not going to do it. I mean, if you go look at the uh, firearms that they're finding in prisons, look at the firearms they're finding in South America that people are home manufacturing, I can go to Home Depot and give you something that functions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are there other members with questions or comments? If not, I'm hoping that we don't share that birthday cake. <laughs> hey, it's my birthday in five ha and a half. Happy birthday tomorrow. <laughs>